Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and today we're simplifying fractions. Now sometimes it's called cancelling fractions. All it really means is you take the two numbers in the fraction, the top number and the bottom number, and you try and make them as small as you can. Mathematicians are basically lazy. If you need to do something with a fraction, like multiply it or divide it, then the smaller the numbers are, the easier it is to do. And mathematicians don't like making work for themselves. They always try and make life as easy as possible for themselves. So whenever you give your fraction answer in maths, you must always cancel it or simplify it to make the numbers as small as possible. And then when anybody needs to do anything with it, it's always going to be easier. So let me explain the basic concepts first. Let's imagine you've got a pizza again of a wonky pizza but never mind. If we shade in two quarters of the pizza, so there's one quarter and uh, we'll shade in that quarter as well, so two quarters, you can probably see that this is the same as a half. Yep, two quarters is still half a pizza. So these two fractions are in fact exactly the same thing. This one though is preferable because the numbers are smaller than this one. Now to convert from this one to this one, all you have to do is divide the top and bottom by the same number. If you ever divide the top and bottom of a fraction by the same number in maths, it doesn't change. You still have the same amount of stuff. And that's all simplifying fractions is. You just gotta look for numbers that divide into these two things to make them smaller. So we'll try a few examples and you should get the hang of it. So we'll start with 16 over 24. So we're just trying to divide the top and bottom by any number, as long as it's the same number for both, and that should make them smaller. So we need to think, what number divides into 16 and 24? Well, 2 goes in, so let's divide them by 2. Half of 16 is 8. Half of 24 is 12. We've divided them both by 2. Great, it's simpler. Although, we could divide these two by something else as well. We could divide them down and make them even smaller. So let's keep going. So what divides into 8 and 12? Well, 2 divides into them again. They're both still even, so we'll divide it by 2 again. So eight, uh, 2 rather into 8 goes 4 times, and 2's into 12 go 6 times. Great, now they're even smaller. But we can still divide them both by 2. They're still even. So 2's into 4 go 2, 2's into 6 go 3. Now I can't divide them by anything. There's no number that divides into 2 and 3. So this is the smallest numbers I can get. This is the simplified or cancelled version of the fraction. And this is the one we prefer to any of these. Whenever you simplify or cancel, you must go all the way. You've got to keep going until you can't make the numbers any smaller. However, if I just go back to the beginning again, when we had 16 over 24, if you divide by a bigger number, then you can cut out some of the gump in the middle. So for example, 8 goes into both of these numbers. So 8 into 16 will go twice, and 8 into 24 go three times. And look, we've jumped straight to the simplified answer. If you can divide the top and bottom of any fraction by the biggest number you can, in this case 8 is the biggest number that goes into 16 and 24, then that will always get you straight to the answer, and you don't need to do all this work. That does kind of require you knowing your times tables though. Sometimes this can be hard to spot. If you are struggling with learning your times tables, and it's very important that you do learn them, you shouldn't be trying to work them out. It shouldn't be one eight, two eight, three eight. You should know what they are. Then go and watch the times tables video and I'll give you some tips on how you can learn your times tables once and for all. All right, let's look at another example. So let's try something a little bit harder. We'll do 49 over 56, yeah. well, what number divides into 49 and 56? That's the question. Well, again, you really need to know your times tables here. In this case, seven goes into 49 and 56. So divide them both by seven. Sevens into 49 go seven times, seven sevens are 49. And sevens into 56 go eight times, seven eighths are 56. So dividing them both by seven, you get down to 7 eighths. And it's much nicer dealing with this rather than having to deal with a fraction like this. That's why we always simplify maths. Okay, we'll try one more example and then we'll finish. Let's do a nice big one. We'll have 128 over 160. 
Now, even if you know your times tables, you might struggle a bit when you get to large numbers like this. But if they're both even, you can just keep dividing by two. It might take a bit longer than if you spotted the biggest number, but you will get there. So in this case, if you halve 128, well, half of 120 will be 60, half of eight will be four, so half of 128 is going to be 64. And if we divide this by two as well, half of 160, half of 16 is eight, so it's going to be 80. So we divide them by two, and now this is easier to deal with. And you might spot what divides into 64 and 80. But if you don't, just divide it by two again. Half of 64 is 32. Half of 80 is 40. Now it's a bit easier to spot what divides into both of these. But if you can't spot it, just keep dividing by two. Half of 32 is 16. Half of 40 is 20. Now you really should be able to spot what goes into both of these at this point. So let's jump straight to the answer here. Four goes into 16 and 20. Four fours are 16. Five fours are 20. So 128 over 160 turns out to be four fifths. We could have divided by eight here. And here, we could have divided by 16, actually. 16 would go into 64 and 80. But again, that would be a bit tricky to spot. So if you're struggling and they're both even, just keep dividing by two. You should get there in the end. But you must keep going until you can't divide by anything else. Yep, always check, make sure nothing else goes into there. So that's simplifying fractions. Always divide them down. Whenever you give a fraction answer, you must always cancel it as much as possible. My name's Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Thank you.